Generally, <clears throat> um, they have indicated that they, because um, the county had five years to come up with a solution to the structure, and in that five years a solution wasn't um, implemented, that now the Department of Justice uh, is seeking to um, make sure that something, either a new structure happens, but some some change gets made in order to um, meet the requirements that Department of Justice has placed upon the county as far as the structure. Mm -hmm. So the indication has been that they are moving toward um, filing a lawsuit in federal court, which would be um, resolved with a consent decree, which would require the county um, to build a new building or to eliminate the issues with this building within a period of the next couple of years. Um, so, I mean, I, I know there's been debate at the, on the city and county level about what those solutions are. Um, what would you like to see happen? Well, you know, there's, <coughs> there, uh, there are those that have different opinions, but I'm going to go with the opinion of the experts. Um, over, over the last 13 years, we have had four different study groups look at the jail um, and make recommendations to the Board of County Commissioners and to the group, every group, each of those four groups recommended to build a new jail. We have had um, two or three different professional jail architectural firms that we have worked with over the last 13 years. They have looked at remodeling this building and building an annex, which would include kitchen, laundry, medical, um, and, a, and housing for about 600 um, minimum to medium security inmates. And, and the reason for that is that all 1,200 cells up, upstairs are maximum security cells. Um, and they have looked at the issue of remodeling and the cost of remodeling versus the construction of a new facility. And each one of those experts to the person, to the company, have recommended the uh, building of a new facility because of ta because of um, savings of tax dollars, that actually, if you remodel this facility within <clears throat> five years, you will actually be paying more to um, remodel and operate this facility than you would be going out and building a brand new one. And at the end of ten years, it would if you stayed here and remodeled, it would be costing you. $28 million more than if you went out and built a new facility. So um, everybody can have their opinion, but I'm going to go by the facts. And the facts are four committees, four recommendations, build a new jail. Three different professional architectural firms. Look at remodeling. Look at building a new one. All three have recommended building a new one. So in every instance over the last 13 years, the entire issue has been uh, studied time and time again. And in every instance, the recommendation has been to build a new jail. So my recommendation is to follow the, ex the, the advice of the experts <clears throat> and to build a new jail. I don't know why you want to go off off into um, <clears throat> into some other area that you know is going to cost the taxpayers millions of unnecessary dollars. So is there a way I could get the cop a copy of those reports? Oh uh, yeah, they're on file. Great. I'll um I should follow up with Mark and ask for that. Um, that'd be really helpful. Um, <clears throat> so, um, what happens if we do nothing? If we do nothing, <coughs> excuse me. If we do nothing, 
uh, the Department of Justice uh, is going to go ahead and proceed with the filing of the lawsuit. They're going to um, push for a consent decree through federal court, and they will hold um, Oklahoma County, uh, if, if the judge issues the consent decree, which I see no reason why the, a judge wouldn't, um, Oklahoma County will have um, two years or less to um, fix the issues with this building. So it's not going to be a it's not going to be a matter of are we going to do something? Yeah, we're going to do something. We're going to do something because the citizens have the opportunity to decide the future, or we're going to do something because a federal judge will have the opportunity to decide the future. What would a new jail uh, mean for the people who are coming in here who have you know, serious mental illnesses? Well, <clears throat> from a mental illness standpoint. Um, we're going to have about 300 beds that are seg that will be segregated beds that will be um, available to how to to place those with mental health issues. There will be about 40 beds that will be totally segregated from those beds that will be allocated for those who are being treated back to competency. So. Um, those with the most serious mental health issues will have um, basically an isolated area from the general from the, from the general mental health population um, in single cell rooms, so that a psychiatrist um, or a mental health professional can work with them on a daily basis from the Department of um, Mental Health. The rest of the <clears throat> the rest of the population, the mental health population, will have program space to be able to do either one-on-one -on -one individual counseling, or program space to do group counseling um, and group sessions. Yeah, I know that like a lot of nonprofits and will offer different services in prisons. Are the same opportunities available for on, on a county level? It's just the space is not there. Um, that that's true. This, we have no program space for outside groups to mm -hmm. come in and partner. Very very limited the amount of program space we have. Um, we have, I mean, we have things like now we have interns that come in um, from uh, OU School of Psych uh, Psychiatry um, and work with our psychiatrist here, but. Um, We'll have <clears throat> we'll have room over there, and and the, the the program the plan calls for not just um, it calls for interaction within the community. We have we're going to be working with a lot of our private partners in the community to develop um, as they go out into the day reporting center. Um, you know, one of the requirements is getting a job. Well, it's sometimes difficult for someone charged with a crime or with mental health issues to get a job. So we, we part of the plan calls for us partnering with, per, with um, programs that have uh, employment skills training, um, em, help them find a job and keep a job. It has, if there's a problem with them living on the street, um, it's difficult to live on the street and work at a full-time job, so there'll be, um, housing coordination too, assistance with finding them housing. It's not going to be something where, where we provide them housing, it's going to be for something where we'll provide in partnership with a private partner um, where they can go out and find a place to live, um, help them find a place. So it's going to be it's going to be working within our community where we just don't kick someone out of jail without the ability to stay out of jail working with them to keep them out of jail. And the, the other part of that is uh, to divert them before they come to jail. If they're identified with a um, just a minor criminal behavior but um, mental health issues, then what we want to be able to do is work with the courts to divert them from the jail s system into a treatment system where we can get them on their meds, um, regular meetings with counselors to keep them and divert them from having to come in and go through the the, the, the uh, court system, mm -hmm. the jail system. I mean, we're, our, we're burdening down our court system that with 
many minor offenses that are a direct result of mental health issues. And, um, and that takes time away and it increases length of time stay in this facility for people who need to be in front of a judge, and that's those who are charged with murder, rape, armed robbery, um, drug trafficking, I mean, the, the most serious offenses. But the courts are spending a lot of time with um, more minor issues that are a direct result of mental health issues, untreated mental health in issues. What might, be, what might be some examples of those minor offenses, like vandalism or... It could be vandalism. It could be, um, you know, and you know, interestingly enough, especially when the when the um, when the weather gets difficult, um, those those with that we see repeatedly with um, more mental health issues will commit minor crimes in order to get put in jail um, because it gives them first a place to be. And two, it allows them to get medications, to get treatment. But it could be vandalism. Um, that's the most, usually the, the, the one of the most um, repeats that we see. Um, it could be, um, you know, stealing something and then waiting to get caught. Um, you know, making, making a very apparent theft, but then waiting for the police to show up or waiting for someone to catch them. Uh, a lot of times it's on purpose, the crimes that are committed on purpose to get caught so they can get booked into this facility. And what's that like to say out loud? Because you're talking about, you know, I, mean, I hear a lot of um, leaders say that because of the lack of treatment options available, people a lot of times, especially low-income Oklahomans, end up either in jail, homeless, or dead. Um, and what you're saying is the in-jail part sometimes comes with the intention of knowing this is the only way I can get medications and talk to a psychiatrist. I mean, that just seems, I use this term a lot, but it seems mind-boggling that that's someone's go-to, you know, like, I just... It, sadly, it is. Our, um, sadly, our jails have become, I mean, they're well known for, I mean, we, we have to have psychiatric care. We have to provide psychi psychiatric medication, and people, especially people who have been here before, know that this is where they can come to get that care and or medication. And that's one of the things that the program that we propose does. Um, it, it proposes letting us be able to help establish partnerships with private uh, entities to try to come in, in contact with these people before they uh, lose hope, commit a crime, so they can come in and get their meds or see a psychiatrist. Um, when I was doing my jail tour, um, which I appreciate, um, they mentioned that when that when this jail was built, mental health was not really something that they were thinking about in the construction of it. I was hoping you explain, like, you know, because saying that now seems like people would be like, what? Like that went, But if you could explain sort of why that wasn't really part of the conversation in the jail's construction and how that conversation has evolved, you know, since, I mean, you've been in law enforcement for that time period, so. Well, I don't, <clears throat> I don't know why it wasn't, I, I wasn't sure if at the time this mm -hmm. was designed or built. Um, I can just, I can just guess that the reason it was not part of the conversation was that the company that was designing this facility had absolutely no experience in jail design. Um, so what they what they dealt with, and by also by what I understand, the sheriff at the time was not allowed to give input into the design of this facility. So uh, the company that designed this facility was an office commercial building designer. <clears throat> and that's why this building looks so nice on the outside. It looks like a commercial building. Um, that's why it looks so nice on the outside, but it's so functionally illiterate on the inside. Um, and so they had no, no history whatsoever, no knowledge whatsoever of how to design a jail. Um, and I'm sure that, that mental health was not an issue for commercial designers. 
Um, matter of fact, medical wasn't really an issue for commercial designers, and that's why our medical uh, facility is a retrofit facility. Um, you know, no offices for doctors or, or psychiatrists, um, and it, it just wasn't something that was thought about when this building was being designed. So um, that's my best guess as to why mental health did not have a prominent role in discussion during the time this building was being designed or built. Uh, well, Sheriff, I know you have to go soon. Is there anything else you want to add about the jail proposal or, you know, the current jail that I haven't asked you? Um, <clears throat> no, it, it, it's something that, that, um, that we're going to have to address quickly. Um, the Department of Justice is not going to sit back. They just are not. And they're going to proceed forward. They're pushing um, for some for some kind of uh, response from the the county. And um, I don't know what that's going to be, other than the fact that I know we've uh, conveyed to them that this committee has finished its work and has made the recommendation to build a new jail and to proceed with a, um, a financing plan. Uh, my hope is that um, that that recommendation will, put, will be put into action. Uh, you know, I'm I'm very convinced that the citizens of Oklahoma County understand, um, have maybe not understand, but have heard of all of the issues that have surrounded this building for so long. And in my, I'm in the I'm in the public uh, every day. And, and every day I have somebody come up to me and say, it sounds like finally we're going to get a solution to the jail. Or I support the plan that's been put forward. Um, I think the public is well aware of the problem. I think the public is very supportive of um, the effort that we put in place. And I guess the one thing that we really haven't talked about is the fact that the design of this building is also um, hurtful to the employees that work here. Um, we have the way the building's designed with blind spots, um, the way the cells are designed without being able to look in the cells other than through an eight, eight inch by 10 inch window. Um, you know, that's basically a size of a piece of paper, but that's the only view into a cell. Um, so it, it doesn't lend itself to one being employee friendly, but it does lend itself to inmates being able to be not friendly as they interact with our employees. Yeah, if they're like right by the door, you can't even see them. If you're right by the door, you are taking, a, a, when you open that door, you're taking your life in your hands uh, on any door in this facility. Yeah. And, um... It just, our, our employees and the public deserve better. What has your uh, staff turnover rate been like, and how do you think that a new jail might affect that? Well, <clears throat> our staff turnover rate is high. Mm -hmm. um, it, some people just don't, like, well, once they get here, they just don't like working around inmates. Inmates are not the friendliest people on the, on the planet. Um, some people um, don't like the um, the risk to their personal safety in in the facility. Our <coughs> our pay <coughs> is extremely low. Pay is very low. Um, and one of the things that you know, I think one of the things that uh, people also need to know is the fact that when this building was built, it was financed by a one penny sales tax for one year. Um, that didn't raise enough money to build the building. So what they had to do was they had to cut cost in order to build the building based upon the budget that they had. And that's why a lot of things in this building aren't done right and never will be able to be done right, such as the plumbing or the electrical. Um, but... Um, the other thing that wasn't passed was any money for operations. 
and Oklahoma County is the only county in the state of Oklahoma that doesn't have a sales tax, a county sales tax. And a lot of those county sales taxes have been passed to build and or operate county jails. Tulsa County has an operational tax for operating the county jail. So thus <coughs> we're, we're um, left without sufficient operating revenue um, and thus our employees are very low paid. Um, we cannot compete in the metro area when our detention officers make 27000 a year.